News 46 is brought to you by Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. News is also brought to you by Smitty's Cards and Coins. Would you like to know what your collectibles are worth? Come by 2281 Postal Road, Unit 4, across from the post office. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight on News 46, a presentation is given regarding public transportation. A local man is arrested for impersonating an officer and Axia Home Loans cuts a ribbon with the Chamber of Commerce. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Tuesday, August 18th, 2015. I'm Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. A group called the Night Riders may finally have the answer to so the cost is zero to our town now and in the future. Riders will pay a minimal fee. There will also be programs to ride for free available. Lorraine Murray made a presentation this morning at the Board of County Commissioners Chambers. We actually came to the RTC meeting this morning um, from the Transportation Committee to give them an update on the status of the public transportation for Pahrump and for all of Nye County. So break this down for me. You're getting four buses donated? We do. We have a company out of um, Utah that has been donating buses to needy transportation departments and we're one of them. And so we made application. Again, the RTC approved that and um, we sent our letter of interest and they did award four buses to the program. So we actually have that capital expenditure already done. The buses will be here. And this bus system would be uh, for public transportation everywhere throughout our area, right? We're gonna start with Pahrump and it's a called an on-demand system. So people would call in 24 hours in advance and tell them where they need a bus and where it needs to take them. Um, that bus would pick them up and drop them off. Mm -hmm. And um, after that has been decided in Pahrump, we, ought, we want to desperately move out into the northern. So we would be wanting to move into Beatty and Tonopah with bus routes that would bring them into Pahrump to do shopping or all the things that they, they need their trips for, doctors. So where do you guys go from here? Well, we go now to, um, we're, we have, Albert Bass was able to get a technical assistance grant mm -hmm. that is free cost to us technical assistance. Mm -hmm. So the next step is, um, Charles to come in and do some route planning and look at demand, um, just technical assistance support so that we're planning things well. Um, that's been a huge um, benefit to us that we have experts coming in literally from all over the country to look at what our um, needs will be and to look at how we can best provide for those. Our community have been asking for a long time to have a affordable and reliable transportation system and we have presented them the Commission with a plan where this could be delivered to our community at zero cost out of our budget because I realize that they are being prudent and being fiscally responsible and assuring that the citizens receive the things that they need to but within the consideration of the limitations of our budget. This program is being presented at zero cost out of the county budget. And zero obligations, right? And, and zero risk and obligation going forward. Should the system not continue to be viable at the end of this grant cycle, next year, year after, when it shuts down, there's no investment, there's no obligation at all. So there's no risk, there's no cost only reward of providing health and safety to the community, which is the responsibility of the commissioners within the budget restrictions that we have. 
The Nye County Sheriff's Office has arrested Michael Folk for impersonating a peace officer. According to the report, Folk was taken into custody following a neighbor dispute concerning excessive dust from Folk's yard work on Pueblo Street. Michael Folk, according to his neighbor, flashed a badge during a heated argument and stated that he was now a deputy sheriff. When deputies came into contact with Folk, they observed a badge on his hip. The badge issued was for the Nye County Public Administrator's Office and not from the Nye County Sheriff's Office. Folk was arrested and transported to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. KPVM-TV has learned that the badge has been confiscated and that the Public Administrator's Office has since released Folk from his duties. One female was transported to Desert View Hospital yesterday afternoon. Medics responded to a two-vehicle accident yesterday afternoon on Dandelion and Calvada Street. One female reportedly was complaining of hip pain. She was transported to Desert View Hospital. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue and Nye County Sheriff's deputies were all on scene. The Nye County Sheriff's Office will be conducting the accident investigation. When we return, we're going to tell you about some explosions that happened in Vegas this morning. This portion of the news is brought to you by Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. Multiple explosions in Las Vegas occurred this morning at a location of Vegas balloon rides on Polaris. Initial explosions were the result of propane tanks ranging in capacity from 5 to 20 gallons. Two vans with utility trailers and two large propane tanks were venting the fire. Crews were able to quickly extinguish the fire and prevent any further extension to surrounding structures and propane tanks. Metro was able to evacuate neighboring businesses. There remains only one reported injury, which was a 35-year-old male who experienced burns to his arm and leg. He was transported to UMC Trauma Center for further evaluation. The cause of the fire is under investigation, and damage estimates have not been fully determined. Here's Ronnie Gibson with Nye County Public Auction regarding this weekend's huge event. The following is brought to you by Nye County Auction. We have a huge auction this weekend consisting of a whole bunch of quality consignment items as well as we're liquidating a local church in town, the Way Baptist Fellowship, closed its doors so we're selling the contents of them. They have uh, some 10 foot pews to, you know, huge ones, a lot of them. Uh, they also have kids stacking chairs, construction equipment, drywall, uh, drywall mud, a 15 passenger van, a uh, 40 foot sea container. Uh, on top of that, we're also doing our general auction that has tons of furniture and collectibles in it, uh, some antique furniture, this beautiful dining set that you see behind me here, uh, pots and pan sets, appliances, collectibles, like I said. Uh, there's just a little bit of everything, as well as the really nice boombox setups. So retail from anywhere to six to $800 each. Uh, everything that we sell here is uh, no reserves, no minimum, so it's going to sell to the highest bidder. We also have uh, quality consignment from Walt Rubio. We're uh, still liquidating that estate. Uh, in this auction, we're adding in a bunch of stuff that's to live bidders only for this sale. We're not doing this one online. So it's going to have ammo. It's going to have uh, reloading equipment in it. It's going to have a lot of accessories. Um, it's got some primers for reloading equipment. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. A lot of nice stuff that we're selling this weekend. Uh, and the doors open up at 9 o'clock on Saturday. And the auction's at 10, right? The auction starts at 10 o'clock on Saturday. We're going to do preview all day on Friday, so you definitely want to come down and take a look. There is a large assortment of everything. Uh, the doors open up at 9 o'clock on Friday, and we close at 5 o'clock, so come down and take a look. You're right here on Lola Lane. Yeah, 850 South Lola Lane, the same street as the hospital, uh, like I said. Uh, tell me, you were talking about the online auction. Is that only for the Walt Rubio estate, or is that for everything? Well, we do online auctions. There's specialty auctions that we do uh, here and there. Um, we do the Walt Rubio estate auctions. We're still liquidating his stuff, but we're also taking consignments for that auction as well as our general auctions to be able to add in some nice uh, collectibles. We literally sell a little bit of everything. And keep in mind our New Year's Day sales coming up, and we're also accepting quality consignments for that. It's the biggest hit of the year. Wow. This place is packed with stuff, so it really pays to come down here on Friday for this preview. Oh, you definitely want to come down on Friday. There is so much stuff. If you come down on Saturday, you're going to notice how much stuff that there actually is. So Friday is a good idea. Come down, do your research, take a look at the items, measure things, 
we're here to help you out. But preview also Saturday morning? Saturday morning, doors open up at nine o'clock and the auction starts right at 10 o'clock. For more information, is there a number to call? Yep, give us a call at 775-537-2500. It has been brought to our attention from a viewer of KPVM-TV that there may be an issue at the Nevada Southern Detention Center owned by Correction Corporations of America. The viewer was concerned about a report of tuberculosis at their location. News 46 sent an inquiry to follow up with the viewer, and this is the response from the Southern Nevada Detention Center. On August 12th, an individual detainee in their care was found to be tuberculosis positive. Within an hour of receiving the results, the detainee was isolated from the population and was under a physician's supervision. He began treatment shortly thereafter. All detainees and staff that had been in contact with the patient were tested immediately. All those tested are tuberculosis negative. They continue to monitor the situation, which they believe to be a single isolated event. The Southern Nevada Detention Center would like to extend their thanks to the Southern Nevada Health Department for lending their support. They add that, as always, the safety, security, and health of their staff and those in their care is their top priority. Three caring souls in our community spent yesterday delivering ice to the homeless. Kathy from Creekside Hospice explains. Me, Ryan Muccio, and uh, Michelle Benuelos went out and handed out ice to the homeless. We have no cooling stations out here for them. Yeah, that was one of the things that uh, you guys decided just to do. And so you went out behind the nugget over here and Tell me about the day. Well, we started out at, we met at Smith's after we picked up a bunch of ice, went to Petrick Park, then went behind the nugget. Um, people were so grateful yeah. to just have the ice. And one that stood out to me, and this is kind of silly, was a little dog. Yeah. They opened the bag of ice and gave the dog some ice. Oh, wow. And he just, even the dog was ecstatic <laughs> to have it. <laughs> it's a extreme weather right now. And like you said, we have no cooling stations. We have no locations for these uh uh, homeless to um, cool off. Mm -hmm. uh, how many bags of ice did you guys hand out? We handed out 10. We weren't sure what we were going to encounter. Mm -hmm. um, so we handed out 10. We're t thinking about doing it again and we we're encouraging everybody in the community to please just help somebody, make somebody stay a little bit better than it was before they encountered you. These um, areas back here, you can go up and um, maybe honk and be able to uh, get the residents out. Uh, some of the people I heard, one of the ladies was crying. She was very taken. Yes, yeah, she was. She had um, apparently just had eye surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was just very grateful, God blessing us, and mm -hmm. crying. And there's another lady up there that um, kind of got stuck here and is trying to get back to Idaho. Yeah. And her RV just stopped running, so she stuck back in there. Yeah. And uh, they were all just it, it was grateful. We're t wanting to do it again, and we're also t talking about putting together um, food. Yeah. You know, just some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or something that we can go back there and hand out to them as well. So what did you guys think? How did you come up with this? It was actually Ryan's idea. Yeah. Um, on Facebook, where he was just chatted, he posted something. Yeah. Tomorrow's going to be hot. I think I want to go give the homeless some ice. Yeah. And me and Michelle just kind of jumped in and we're with you. Let's go do it. So it just kind of snowballed from there. When we return, there's a new addition to the White House staff.